Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements and welcome back to another video here on Glass Sand. Today we're going to continue with blueprints. Uh, we're going to venture in to talking about direct blueprint communication. And the example that I have is we have a switch and we have a hidden door and this hidden door is going to move. So if we move under here to the steps, then we uh, show off this area down here. Uh, in terms of this being related to MoGraph, I'm going to try to use terms that are relative to how we would use or how we would set up scenes in MoGraph. And the reason why we're talking about direct blueprint communication is because I feel like this is a vital tool to have in your arsenal for just any kind of interactive uh, game or application, anything that you want to create. You really need to know how to talk uh, from one object to another. Uh, it's super important. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is obviously take a look at our switch blueprint here. And if I open my content browser, I have made a hidden door blueprint, a switch door and a lamp. Um, now the lamp doesn't have any logic on it. I just like to kind of pack things together and uh, place them all over the scene. So if we look at the uh, light really quick, all it is is just the lamp static mesh with a spotlight attached to it. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the hidden door. It's super simple. It's just one of these cubes uh, right here that I just named door. So it's just using the SM underscore cube in the first person, uh, uh, what is it called? First person like content thing. I, I did this in the last video. I forgot what it's called. <laughs> it's just like the starter kit for the first person blueprint. Okay. Anyways, uh, so we don't have any, any logic here. Uh, and then the switch, all it is, is just a box. Um, I do have some text in here. Uh, we're going to talk about um, how to actually get player input uh, for the next version. Uh, so we have a little message in here that we'll probably use on the next video. Uh, but here is a switch. It's just another little cube. So all you have to do is walk into this cube and the door will open. Okay, so let's go ahead and set that up. We're going to go into... Uh, the switches event graph right here. So um, if you hadn't watched the video before, we have in our blueprint editors, we have the components on the left. Uh, we have the variables here on the right. Um, then our construction script in our event graph. So uh, what I'm going to do is jump into our event graph. And the first thing that we need to do is get a hard reference to this door. I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, just communicating directly with the door. So uh, I'm going to type begin for event on begin play. And we talked about this before. Uh, this happens as soon as the game is booted up. Uh, so this is kind of like awake in Unity. If you're used to Unity, it's kind of like the uh, awake function in a way. Um, but we're going to get uh, actor of class and we're going to get the BP underscore hidden door. Okay. So with that, uh, we're just going to right click and we're going to promote this to a variable and we're going to call this uh, our hidden door. Okay, so we're storing this hard reference as a variable so that we can use it. And we're going to use the uh, public uh, variable here with the I. So once we do that, if we hit save and we look at our switch in our engine here we have a reference to a hidden door and we can just use our eyedropper to pick this door so this will only work with this instance of the door this switch will only open this door it's a direct line it's a direct kind of communication that we're setting up okay so we have that stored our reference is cached and it is set into a variable uh, so what we want to do now is with the box selected um, we can actually scroll down on the details panel and do an on component begin overlap. So once we overlap this uh, non-renderable collider box, uh, we're going to make sure that the actor that we that is passing into this uh, is our player. So we can just uh, we can do a simple cast. Uh, we're going to cast to uh, our uh, BP underscore first person character. Uh, so this is the blueprint that is uh, running our pawn in the game. So it has to be the, our character. It has to be the, the pawn that we're possessing for this logic to actually execute any further. 
Uh, we could do something if it fails, we could have some logic here. Uh, but this execute line is if it succeeds. And uh, we're actually going to build a function. So after this, um, we'll be able to open the door. So let's go ahead over to our hidden door and let's build the function that actually uh, moves the door out of the way. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to build a uh, custom event. Uh, I, I don't believe we touched on this last time. Uh, this custom event is literally you can name it anything you want. And you, once we have it cached, like we already did, we can call it. Um, so I'm going to call it uh, Open uh, Sesame because, you know, Aladdin. I grew up in the 90s. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put that there. And then we're going to do something simple here. Uh, there is a function called move component to. So last time we talked about using timelines and uh, linear, doing linear interpretation, a lerp, um, to move something from one spot to another. Uh, but here we're just going to use this move component to. It's really simple. It's really nice. We're going to drag our default scene root in here. And that's going to be our component that we are targeting. And then I'm going to have uh, this be a time of uh, 10 seconds. We're going to make it like epic. Like it's going to move back really slowly and reveal the hidden path for us. So uh, I do have some hard numbers I'm going to place into here. Uh, you know, usually you would want to have like a reference or a variable in your scene, I should say, a variable in the scene that you can kind of move around and, and say this is where the door's going to move to. But for uh, this simple tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and type this in manually. So uh, let's see, we got 3000 here and then uh, we're going to do negative 50. Okay. And the reason I chose these numbers, if we look at the door, the hidden door, you can see that the um, lo the location is negative 1200, 3000, negative 50. And this is negative 2000, 3000, negative 50. So uh, we're just going to scoot it back on the X axis. Okay, that's how I came up with that number. So let's go ahead and compile and save. Okay, so we have our custom event. This is like our function that is going to move our door. So if we come back into the switch blueprint, uh, now that we have the hidden door uh, as a hard reference that we've selected, we can then drag that out into our graph and we can get our function from the hidden door since it's already cached. Now you have to do this. Uh, you have to have a reference stored in order to uh, talk to this and be able to manipulate this function. Uh, so what we're going to do is just type uh, open sesame and that's it. So let's review really quickly uh, before we try this out. Uh, basically on the event begin play when the application is started, we're going to get an actor of class BP underscore hidden door. And then we're going to store that as a variable. On our overlap, we're going to make sure that it's only the first person character pawn that is walking in to make this succeed and open the door, open our hidden door. If we go back to hidden door, all we're doing is moving the component. So super simple, uh, but it's really cool when, when things like this actually work. So uh, if I jump in here and move forward, then we can see our door is now opening and we're using Lumen. So everything was looking super cool. We have dynamic lighting inside of here and yeah, our trap door has opened for us. Now this isn't my preferred way I would set something up like this. It's pretty susceptible to uh, human error. We have very hard references. We're typing in hard numbers and things like that. Uh, but nonetheless, it's just a video to help you get started with blueprint communication. Yes, you can build uh, simple games and very simple applications this way, but we're going to venture further and I'm going to show you some new stuff. Uh, hopefully that you're going to be able to understand and be able to utilize in your own projects. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And leave a like on this video because everyone on YouTube tells you to do that. Well, might as well. I might as well tell you to do that. If you have any questions or you have any videos that you would like to see, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. I definitely check all the comments there and respond to all of them that I can. Until next time, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot and take care.